Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over a quick uh, discussion and description of what is the difference between temperature, heat, and internal energy. Let's get started right now. Okay, temperature. All these things have kind of a really specific definition. Uh, temperature, heat, and internal energy. And temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the individual particles or the particles in a substance. Now, a lot of times people talk about temperature, they say hot and cold, like that's hot and that's cold, or that's cold and that's hot. And that's not really a good description of, you know, the temperature of something, because some people might say something's hot and some people might say something's cold and vice versa. But for example, if we have two beakers of water, one being 35 degrees Celsius and one being 15 degrees Celsius, some people might say, well, 35 degrees Celsius is hot, especially if you want to like take a bath or something like that, that might be kind of hot. But if you're trying to cook, and you want to boil water, that's not really that hot. Well, 15 degrees Celsius might be kind of cold for swimming or bathing, but some people might say, well, that's not really that cold because I want ice, I want frozen water, I want water at zero degrees Celsius, so that's not really that cold. So it's really kind of a, you know, a, a term we use personally to describe how water feels or how hot or cold it is, but it's not the temperature, okay? So we don't use hot and cold, and the only thing the temperature tells us, when we measure the temperature with the thermometer, if we have one uh, glass or one beaker at 35 and another one at 15, that tells us that the particles in the 35 degree beaker are moving faster. The average speed of those particles in the 35 degree uh, water is faster and in the 15 degree water it's slower. Okay, it's just a rep representation of the average kinetic energy of the particles in the substance. I kind of think of it like how fast they're moving. Okay, there are specific units we use to measure temperature. Okay, the one the, in the SI system, we use Kelvin. We don't say degrees Kelvin, we just say Kelvin, which is B with a K. Also, most commonly in schools and things like that, when you have a thermometer, it measures in Celsius, degrees Celsius. That's uh, Lord Kelvin and under Celsius. And then there's Daniel Fahrenheit, which is often used in the United States, but not so much or not really in science class. If you're working in the metric system, you're either using Kelvin or Celsius because one degree Kelvin is equal to one degree Celsius or change of one degree Celsius is equal to one one Kelvin okay don't say degrees Kelvin You're not supposed to say degrees Kelvin. You're supposed to say Kelvin degrees Celsius and Kelvin okay that is temperature now um, also when we talk about temperature if we want to add heat to something or if we want to change the temperature then we add heat so adding heat to a substance will cause the temperature to rise. And if you take heat away, then of course that will cause the temperature to decrease. Now there is no real maximum temperature, theoretically speaking, but there is a minimum temperature. And that minimum temperature we call absolute zero. And absolute zero is when all molecular motion stops. Like we oftentimes we all say all the molecules stop moving and they stop vibrating. It's not that the electrons stop orbiting around the nucleus, but the molecules stop rotating, they stop moving, they stop vibrating, and that's at zero Kelvin, which is also minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. That is the temperature for absolute zero. Okay, now we're going to try to move on to internal energy, okay, or energy. Now there's lots of different kinds of energy. There's kinetic energy, there's potential energy, sound, light energy, but here we're talking about the internal energy of a substance. And an internal energy is a measure of the total energy of all of the molecules in a system. And they can have different kinds of energy. One kind they can have is translational kinetic energy. Now this is what we talk about when we have, simply have a monoatomic gas and the molecules are just moving. Translation just means they're moving across or moving around. They're just moving, and that's translational kinetic energy. Then also, if we have bigger molecules, they can have rotational and vibrational energy, kinetic energy. And then we can have the potential energy due to the intermolecular attractive forces between molecules. That's like the uh, force that attracts one molecule to another. Not a chemical bond, but an interactive force between different particles. Okay, so we add all those up depending on what kind of substance we have, then that tells us the internal energy. Now, let's just talk about quickly about what the difference is, and a little example here, internal energy or temperature and energy. Now, we have two objects. We have a smaller object, and we have another object that's four times as big. This is just, think of it as a two-dimensional object. I can take one of these and put four of them in here, 
and that means this one is four times as big. Now they're at the same temperature. That means that the average speed of the particles in those particular pieces of material are the same. Okay, the average speed is the same. The temperature is the same. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy, so the average speed is the same. But the more massive object, the bigger one over here, has four times as much energy or four times as much internal energy simply because it's four times as big and has four times as much stuff. So it has four times as much translational or potential or kinetic energy because it's four times as big, so to speak. Okay, that's kind of the difference between temperature and energy. Okay, now heat. Okay, now I got this wrong in the last video, so I got to get this right. The temperature, no, excuse me, heat is simply the transfer of energy from areas of high temperature to areas of low temperature. Okay, heat is the transfer. A lot of times people say, well, what do I want to do when I change the phase? If I want to melt ice or freeze water, what do I do? Well, you heat it up or cool it down. You don't, that's not, we don't really say that in science club. You don't say heat it up. You can add energy to it in the form of heat. Okay, so we transfer energy from areas of high temperature to areas of low temperature. That is the direction that heat goes. A lot of times in class, people say, oh, heat goes up. Well, yeah, but that's because it's usually cooler up there, but it goes from high temperature to low temperature. It's the flow or the transfer of energy. Now, for example, here we have two objects. We have the blue object, which is 50 degrees Celsius. We have the red object, which is 20 degrees Celsius. And what's going to happen when we put those two objects next to each other? Well, energy. Okay, it's going to transfer over in the form of heat. It's going to transfer from the warmer to the colder. So Q, which is the symbol that we use for heat, heat is going to flow from this object to this object. Now, a lot of times people think, well, this one's bigger, so it's going to flow this way. Now, it may have more internal energy, but the heat is going to be transferred across that temperature gradient from areas of high temperature to areas of low temperature. Okay, And we can calculate the amount of heat that is transferred by using this equation, which says that delta Q, which is the change in heat, is equal to M, the mass, times C, the specific heat, times the change in temperature of one of those two materials, whatever it happens to be. We have to use M for this one and C for this one, and also the change in temperature. That way we can figure out how much heat flowed from this object to this object. Okay? So that is what I want to do. Go over a description and a little bit of definition of what the difference is between heat, energy, temperature, heat, and uh, energy. And then next video, we'll do some simple uh, calculations uh, using this equation down here so we can calculate the change in heat. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, please don't forget, sharing these caring. Share this video with all your friends. Show them how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.